This module is designed to emphasize environmental and policy approaches for physical activity promotion in populations. This is an emerging area of active research that tries to isolate the more upstream determinants that can impede or enable physical activity in small areas neighborhoods or larger areas. Communities A focal point in this chapter is measurement of the environment. This is tied to one of the core assignments recommended in this instructor guide. Environmental and policy approaches may involve changing the physical environment, developing social networks, changing organizational norms and policies, or enacting laws or legislation that affect public health professionals, community organizations, legislators, departments of parks and recreation, transportation departments, planning commissions, and the media. What do you think of when you hear the term built environment? The apartment or home in which you live. The gym or fitness center across street. The building in this university. A hike or bike trail in the center of town. Although many people have proposed different various definitions, the built environment refers to the set of constructed structures that influence opportunities for physical activity. These structures can be positive or negative in their influences on physical activity. Physical environment is a broader term encompassing the built environment as well as other physical supports or barriers. You may consider the following questions when it comes to built environment. Can the built environment influence physical activity? If so, which aspects help? Which aspects hurt? How can the local physical environment be changed to increase opportunities for physical activity? What strategies aid in the development and implementation of policies to promote physical activity by changing or enhancing the built environment? Then, how does the built environment influence participation in physical activity? Although many people have proposed various definitions, for our purposes, the built environment refers to the set of constructed structures that influence opportunities for physical activity. These structures can be positive e.g., sidewalks on a busy street or negative e.g. A six-lane road with no crosswalks that prevents pedestrians from getting to one side from the other in their influences on physical activity. Environmental and policy approaches in promoting physical activity, we will cover the following four components. Creation of slash enhanced access to places for physical activity combined with informational outreach, community scale urban design and land use, street scale urban design and land use, and transportation policies and practices. Broadly defined, the term access refers to the right to approach or use something. In physical activity and health, creating or enhancing access to places for physical activity is an evidence-based strategy for increasing physical activity and exercise. It is feasible to create or enhance access to places for physical activity combined with informational outreach in promoting physical activity. It includes multi-components built environment like trails slash facilities access, reducing barriers like providing safety and offering affordability, providing training and incentives, and offering site-specific programs, such as workshops, seminars, etc. What are three ways to increase access to physical activity at a work site? Answers may vary but include the following provide secure and covered parking for bicycles to encourage bicycling to and from work, install employee shower facilities and changing rooms. Provide financial incentives for active commuting to work, create a culture of physical activity by encouraging brief exercise breaks throughout the workday. 
provide on-site fitness facilities or buildings that are conducive to physical activity as well as easy access to walking and running routes, distribute walking maps, offer reduced fee fitness or recreation center memberships to employees and their families, and encourage employees to participate in community-based worksite exercise competitions or community-based mass participation events. How can signs, texting, announcements on websites, mailings, and emails influence access to physical activity opportunities? Essentially, it does not appear to be enough to build or make it easier to get to physical activity resources. Appropriate and targeted information lets people know about the existence of these resources. Signs, texting, Announcements on websites, mailings, and emails are all ways to let people know that access exists. Creation of slash enhanced access to places for physical activity combined with informational outreach is recommended, as there is strong evidence to support the effectiveness of the programs. Second way physical activity can be influenced by the built or physical environment is through urban design and land use policies. Urban design and land use are separate constructs but are frequently combined in discussion of the physical and built environment and physical activity. What is urban design, according to this text? Urban design refers to the form, function, and outward appearance of the physical environment in defined entities, such as neighborhoods, towns, cities, and communities. Examples of urban design for physical activity are landscape design in municipal parks, street design for pedestrian safety, and recreation center design and placement within a community. What is community scale urban design land use? Give an example. Community scale urban design land use policies and practices involve changes and enhancements to the physical and built environment of urban areas of several square miles or kilometers or larger. Examples of urban design for physical activity are landscape design in municipal parks, street design for pedestrian safety, and recreation center design and placement within a community. Community level changes can decrease motor vehicle traffic, increase mixed land use and density, and can be done through zoning regulations and building codes. Often overlooked, but very relevant, are the effects community-scale environmental changes can have on factors outside of physical activity. Various studies have reported higher amounts of green space in communities that encourage physical activity. People in these communities have a greater sense of community, or belonging, compared to those other communities, and some studies even reported lower crime rates. Community scale urban design and land use policies and practices is recommended, as there is sufficient evidence to support the effectiveness of the policies and practices. Urban design and land use policies and practices include changes to the built and physical environment in smaller geographic areas, generally limited to a few blocks. Then, what percentage of increase in physical activity can be expected with appropriate street-level changes in urban design? All things considered, a 35% average increase in physical activity might be anticipated with appropriate street-level changes. The types of changes necessary clearly depend on the neighborhood that is targeted.
the street-scale urban design and land use approaches seek to make neighborhoods or similar areas more livable and amenable to a variety of physical activity opportunities. Strategies include street-level changes, traffic calming structures, improved lighting, and aesthetic enhancements. Street-scale urban design and land use policies and practices is recommended, as there is sufficient evidence to support the effectiveness of the policies and practices. Policies and practices that encourage and facilitate walking and bicycling for transportation. Some examples include use policy measures, such as roadway design standards, expanding public transportation services, subsidizing public transportation, providing bicycle lanes and racks, and increasing the cost of parking. Currently, there is sufficient evidence to support the effectiveness of the transportation policies and practice as there were too few studies in this area of inquiry so far. Measuring the built and physical environment is a challenge. There are a variety of ways to assess the built and physical environment. Self-reported measures of perceptions of the environment, direct observation techniques audits, and secondary analysis techniques using existing data sets and geographic information systems GIs. How can audits be used to evaluate the physical environment of a community for walkability? Audits quantify aspects of the built and physical environments at the community and street levels that can be observed, such as the completeness of sidewalks, noise, and traffic levels. The presence of abandoned or unsafe buildings, and the cleanliness and usability of parks and park equipment. The results of these audits can be used for research, to change and improve the environment, or both. How can GIs be used to assess the built environment in relation to physical activity access as well as barriers? GIs allows the analysis of geographic and social data e.g., distances, landmarks, density, traffic, crime, resources, green space by overlaying data in map format from multiple sources. By using objectively derived data sets containing measures of the built environment. Researchers and planners can identify barriers to and supports of physical activity and relate the presence of those barriers and supports to physical activity levels in a community. Which environmental and policy approaches are effective physical activity interventions? Answers may vary but include the following policy outcomes, policy implementation, policy determinants, and policy identification. Environments include the following schools, work sites, public spaces, private spaces, transportation, and health. Three broad classifications of policies that can positively influence physical activity participation. First, Policies can include formal written codes, regulations, or court decisions that carry legal authority. Municipal zoning regulations that regulate the types of businesses that can operate in a given area are an example of a formal written code. City codes that require a certain distance of building setback from a street to accommodate sidewalks and pedestrian traffic are another example. A state legislative mandate for providing daily physical education to elementary school children is another example of a formally written regulation. Here are some implications for practice consider social ecological model. Realize that all interventions need some level of adaptation. C. 
seek out other forms of evidence e.g., political will, stakeholder interests, evaluate the programs.